head of that organization about the rejection when Inside Politics continues. Two months after seeming to accept a $1,000 donation from the log cabin Republicans, Bob Dole's presidential campaign is sending the money back. According to a statement from Dole spokesman Nelson Warfield, quote, our policy is to decline contributions from political groups that have an agenda that is in opposition to Senator Dole's positions on the issues. Warfield also says the Dole campaign was not aware of this particular contribution until it was mentioned in a column in the Detroit News last week. The Law Cabin Republicans is made up of gay and lesbian members of the GOP. Its executive director, Rich Taffel, joins us now on Inside Politics. What bothers you most about this rejection of your contribution? What bothers me most is the lack of integrity here. Uh, clearly, this campaign came to us asking us for financial support. We had discussions with the campaign at the highest levels. The issues that we've been working on, frankly, have been AIDS issues, and Ryan White has been the number one issue. And we've had ongoing conversations with the campaign. So to be dishonest, to say that they don't know who we are, we didn't know about the check. Uh, I walked around at a fundraising event with my name tag and our, our organization, spoke to the senator briefly. It's just purely dishonest, and I think it, that's, the, that's the worst part of all this. You've talked with Bob Dole face to face? Absolutely, at the fundraising event here in Washington. Do you think there are reasons other than those stated for the rejection of your oh, contribution? Absolutely. absolutely. I think that the reasons they're doing it is because uh, the campaign is fearful it cannot get the right wing vote in the Republican Party primaries, and they were frightened after the Iowa straw poll, and I think they see their polling data dropping uh, each week, and they figured uh, this would be explosive to the right wing, so we have to jettison the gays. Have you jettisoned the gays? you think that's one of their prime motivations? Jettison any will look like a moderate Republican to far-right Republicans. Have you made contributions to other Republicans? The only other uh, candidate we've made contributions to at this point is uh, Governor Pete Wilson in his presidential campaign. But we'll be looking at the other candidates, too. It's just that the Dole campaign came to us very early and uh, met with us very early. And I understand you also received a letter asking for a contribution for an event next month in September. Uh, actually, it's ironic that the day we did get the check back from the Dole people, we got another check, the, a letter sent earlier this week before all this from a member of the Finance Committee saying, uh, we've got other events, we want to comp you in for free because you've done so much for the campaign, and we look forward to seeing you. Hope you can get some of your members to our event. Back to the campaign. If the Front Runners camp is rejecting your $1,000 contribution, you say you've made one to Governor Pete Wilson's campaign. What are your thoughts? Well, I think we'll be looking at other, uh, obviously we'll be looking at a number of candidates. And in no way was this an endorsement of Bob Dole. We were working with all the candidates. Uh, we just had our convention in Cincinnati. Arlen Specter sent uh, people to speak on his behalf and a, and a letter. And a lot of our people are interested in that campaign. Other folks are interested in uh, Luger's campaign and Lamar Alexander's campaign. So we will talk to all the various campaigns. And, um, but at this point, only Pete Wilson's received money from us. I'm curious. Senator Dole has said gays and lesbians have civil rights. There should be no discrimination in the United States, period. What more would you have him do or say? Absolutely nothing more. That's exactly what we were looking for. And it was after that that we agreed to support him. Now he's turned around and said that uh, we have a 100% different agenda than what he wants. Do you expect Governor Wilson to return your check? No, I don't. We have a much longer, uh, the California clubs have a much longer relationship with uh, the governor from California. And in fact, I went to an event of his earlier this, this uh, campaign cycle where he was asked about gay rights. And he said that a job is not a special right. And so I think he's got a much longer history working on this issue and is probably more comfortable with it. I think the Dole campaign just panicked. Well, because of some excellent research work done by our Jennifer Martin, I have to ask you a question that it occurred to me as I was reading over some of the notes. Do you see any differences between Senator Dole and Ronald Reagan? Uh, actually, Ronald Reagan was finessed the Republican coalition a lot better than Bob Dole, I think, is going to do. Um, in a sense, he brought a very divergent coalition together, and that's what you need to win in our party in this country. And I don't think Bob Dole's going to be able to do that because he is alienating right now moderates so far that when he comes back to the general election, uh, if I were a member of the Christian coalition making a deal with Bob Dole right now, I'd be very suspicious that I wouldn't get jettisoned in a general election when conventional wisdom says that Bob Dole's too extremist. Rich Temple, thanks very much for joining us. Uh, we tried mightily to get a representative from the Dole campaign to join us on Inside Politics today, but they declined. I think they got caught on this one. Judy?
Boy, how'd you like to be a Republican? I mean, if you're a Republican, you are authoring the revolution. 72 new members of Congress. Ha I'm telling you, it's the most exciting thing moment in the history of 20th century Republican politics. This is incredible. And they're going to lose the presidential election next year. I mean, how do you figure this? Nudie didn't get to talk to the president on the plane, baby. Didn't go on all the way to Israel, and they never said a boob, 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 and the president never talked to me. Here's the Daily News on Newt. I bet he runs. Don't you think? Huh? He's going to run. Well, guess who's here? For the first time in 28 years, we have on the Donahue Show four live Republicans. <laughs> David Frum is writer and commentator for American politics. You're from Canada, are you? That's correct. Interloper. <laughs> um, what's going on here, David? I mean, uh, can, uh, I don't think uh, I could be a member of the Republican Party. I'm pro-choice. I'm for gun control. Uh, narrow, yeah. narrow, narrow. Well, Republicans are going to be content with something less than 100% of the vote. Uh, so they don't have to appeal to absolutely everybody on absolutely everything. And much as we would value your support... Um, we're going to have to get along without me, are you? Uh, but, but the point is that you are cutting off a significant part of your own base by this kind of ideological rhetoric that we hear coming from Paul Wyrick. Can you imagine holding a press conference to condemn Colin Powell? I mean, why don't you just go out of the way to lose? Go out of your way. The, I don't think Clinton should leave the White House. He should not leave the House. He, he is a shoe in We have a two-term president. And you can quote me. I, I will quote you. Um, I, uh, and maybe say, I told you so. But the point of politics is the point of politics isn't just to win. The point, there's, there's a reason you want to win. And the what reason you want to win is in order to govern in a way that you think is both intelligent and principled. Yeah. Um, and so it is not wrong to say to a party, gee, you're sharpening your focus. Of course you're sharpening your focus. If you don't sharpen your focus, you can't govern intelligently. Otherwise, all you produce, as Jimmy Carter so notoriously did, is much from the wind. Here is Arianna Huffington, a uh, bright light on the Republican stage. We're seeing more and more of her. Well, Arianna, you're not for Dole. I'm sadly not for doubt. Why? Well, the man has served. What a life. I mean, a war hero. He's now has his time. Well, it may be his time, but it's not his revolution. And also, as you said, if Dole is a nominee, Clinton is a shoo-in. You can quote me, too. <laughs> yeah. So it's a matter of practical politics. You see Dole No, not just practical politics. As a matter of practical politics, I do not believe Dole is electable. I believe that Clinton is a dazzling campaigner, a lousy president, a dazzling campaigner. He knows how to feel your pain, bite his lip, you know, make you feel he really empathizes. And two months of that, and the American public will forget what a lousy president he was. So we need somebody against him who can really articulate what the Republican agenda is, and yes. who can really articulate the revolution, who can really say that the Republican Party is an inclusive party. We have a gay Republican, we have a black Republican, what? we have a Greek Republican, we have a Canadian Republican, we yes. have pro-choice Republicans. When yeah. you said there is no room for you, Governor Todd Whitman from of New Jersey, but Governor Pete Wilson, Governor Well, they are all Arlen Spector. They're all Arlen Spector. Spector. I could vote for Arlen Spector. Arlen Spector's problem is Arlen Spector. It's not that he's pro-choice. Uh, <laughs> incidentally, we should say, uh, Ariana, you are hap you happen to be pro-choice, uh, and you do I understand you would like to see Newt run? I'd like to see Newt run. And I don't like him to see as a crybaby, but I'd like to see him run. No, President never came back and said hello to me on the airplane. Uh, what do you think he will run? I don't necessarily think he will run, but my reason for encouraging him to run is that he is the most articulate um, exponent of this revolution. And for him, the revolution is not just about balancing the budget. It's about turning lives around. It's about rebuilding communities. It's, it's about, about ending that mess that the welfare state has become. Yeah, it's about, uh, yeah, let's, uh, are we going to end the mess that the Pentagon has become? It's about building 20 B-2 bombers that the Pentagon doesn't want at $1 so billion dollars a piece. Please, how many people can you feed? How much AFDC money could we get from one B-2 bomber that isn't going to work? The B-1 doesn't work. 
Why are we doing this, Ariana? I'm counting on sensible people like you to bring the Republican Party I mean, into the real you, world. Why are you so obsessed with the Defense Department? Because they you... waste more money than the Welfare no, Department no, does. Five trillion dollars was spent on welfare in the last 30 years. Yeah, 30 years. Dollars. How much have we spent on the military in the we last 30 years? We did defeat the Soviet Empire. We, we did not defeat the Soviet it. Empire defeated itself. Oh, no, come on. We it's all right to say that exhausted. now. It's all right to say that now. We have not won the war on poverty, but we did win the war against the Soviet Union. You get all crazy, you Republicans, when you see a black person on welfare. Whoa, wasting my money, and you'll roll out the Sea Wolf, you'll roll out the B2, you rolled out 100 B1s at God knows what cost, never have gone to any war. You are blind when it comes to the waste of the Pentagon, and it's going to hurt you. You want to just make things that go boom, and you're going to give all the headaches to the states. A terrible idea. Phil, can I just re reply very quickly? First of all, even Newt Gingrich has said that he wants to turn the Pentagon into a triangle. We do need to reduce the Pentagon. That's the point he was wow. making. So we have no disagreement on that. that. Point? I'll send you the, the cutting. I bet but you can't uh, find it, though. I will main... send it to you. Right. Well, I believe but you, the, if you But let, if we can just stop that debate for the moment, because the more interesting debate right now is what's happening with welfare reform. And the reason why Republicans want to reform welfare is not because of fraud and abuse. That's a minor reason. It's because it's destroying people's lives. Makes them addicted. It's because and it's destroying the work right. ethic. If it weren't it's for happening. welfare, that they could run out and get any one of the, all these wonderful jobs that were created during the Reagan years. Is you know that what why, you're saying? Phil, you know why the main reason people don't get jobs? What is, is it? It's because they're addicted, they're alcoholics, and they can't get their life together. We need to help them do that. Now, that's you don't not mean the they're alcoholics, literally. You mean they're addicted like alcoholics to the dole. Is this what you're saying? No, no, to no, the no. government? I mean, well, they are alcoholics. I mean, crack addicted. I mean, alcohol addicted. Really? I'm, yes, really. And these are the people that we need to help. So and the problem, the reason we have a lot of welfare is because people are on drugs and uh, addicted. You know what, Phil? You need to look at the statistics of the inner cities. The problems in the inner city, the worst problems are crack and gangs. Is this and we're not going to resolve those problems by giving people welfare checks. We're going to resolve them by getting in there ourselves, personally. Yeah. All of us who are here now have a responsibility to these people. Well, how about the millions of, the millions of people who are whited on welfare and don't live in inner cities? Well, that, too. that too, that too, but, well, but they're not addicted. Are they addicted to, or is this just a black stereotype, Ariana? No, no, but it's you not sound black. to me like you're saying it's black Did people, I mention black? Just did you I said inner black? cities and crack. No, inner said, cities and crack is not just black. And crack oh, yeah. is not just black. There are plenty of white people on crack. There, this is not that a is black-white problem. There are. There are, that is so true. So don't stereotype me. Are, I never mentioned black. Are there more white people on welfare than black people? There are more white people in America. Of course there are more white people on welfare. Yeah. Well, speaking of black people, Milton, is can this be true? <laughs> <laughs> Milton Binns, chairman of the Council of 100. You've been a Republican for before it was cool. Before it was cool, including my ancestors, my grand great grandfather and grandfather. Yeah. Republicans. Well, boy, so, I can. Own, where's your <laughs> book? What's it been like? <laughs> the book has yet to come out, and that's one of the things that we really have to do, Phil. Well, make your case. I know okay. you've done it many times, but what so, in the uh, world is a smart guy like you doing in the Republican well, Party? Phil, first God's of all, sake. let me respond to a couple of comments that have been made. Uh, if the Republican Party and Newt Gingrich and Congressman Speaker Gingrich wants the major changes the American people voted for in 1994, Speaker Gingrich will not run for president, number one. Number two, he will put his full support behind Senator Dole to be the next president of the United States. Because only a moderate Republican with the proven, demonstrated track record, legislative record, yeah. that has distinguished this distinguished American, this patriot's career, right. in the Congress of the United States. A record of absolute moderation, a record of in, why I support... Civil why, rights record. Let me tell you, a civil rights record, well, it's impeccable. For those of you here, let me tell you something. In a private meeting with Republican senators and with, many, with, a, with a small group of Americans, Eleanor Holmes Norton, Congresswoman, delegate, African American for the District of Columbia, said not recently, recently, a couple of months ago, Senator Dole's record on civil rights is second to none in the Congress of the United States. Hooray! Now that now let me Hooray. tell you something. You That's correct. not coming from a Republican saying that. That is coming from a partisan, hard-hitting, Democratic yes. Very delegate impressive. to the United States Congress. 
So what the people in America have to begin to connect up with, which is not being done, right. Phil, is that they know very little of the record, the legislative record. They don't know that when Senator Dole was majority leader of the United States Senate. Listen yeah. to this, Phil. I'm listening. And the Reagan administration was attacking at that time, not, not President Reagan, but key members of his administration and the Justice Department, mm -hmm. of course, were attacking affirmative action. Senator Dole's message to President Reagan was call off those pit bull attacks on affirmative action. That was a message delivered, yes. not only verbally, but delivered in writing well, to President you, Reagan. Milton, yeah. you do him no favors mentioning this because that's hardly going to get him elected. Well, Affirmative well, wait, wait, action wait, wait. is a little bit but like... Uh, right now, he's in favor of... He can't get elected! He can't get elected! That, it doesn't matter, Milton! That is not true! Bill, let me well, tell you something. Ahead. You have not... What people are looking at, you're looking at these national polls which are shifting every day, every week. Yeah. Remember, we have another full year yes, before we do. the 1996 presidential election takes right. place. Can you imagine and a you year of Bob a, a Dole? Of, absolutely. A year of I, these guys I, I, on the stump? I, I can imagine a year of Bob Dole's record being put up against that of the president from Arkansas, yes. who had no record when he was governor of Arkansas on civil rights, and whose record while president with respect to issues impacting on African Americans has been absolutely negative. Look at his vote recently on the legislation on crime, which is aimed at continuing the incarceration of young African American men primarily. A hundred times who, longer for crack you than for... Right, who are caught with a five ounces, of a five grams rather, of, of crack cocaine, as contrasted to those Americans who live in the suburban communities who if they have a hundred times, yep. what is it? With the white powder? With the white powder. Yeah. And yeah. they it's continue to apply that law. Disparity in sentence. You better believe it. And President Clinton had no. Signed If it. he cared anything about the African-American community, about it. what we care, he would have vetoed that legislation like he's standing up now trying to veto other legislation. Mr. Binns, you sit next to Rich Taffel. Well, guess who he directs? This is the executive director of the Log Cabin Republicans. Holy cow, we got us a gay Republican right here on this stage. How many you got in this party? About six? Uh, seven. Seven. <laughs> we hold most of our conventions in phone booths. Let's uh, say for the record, there are many, many, many gay Republicans. Rich, you are one of its, um, one of the most visible. Um, Bob Dole took the check. Finally took the check. Finally. What, what in the world is a gay guy doing in the Republican Party? I mean, oh, that's, yeah, that's a pretty, that's a stereotypical question about gay people. We're all liberal Democrats, and there's an idea that um, a lot of stereotypes about gays we just don't fit into the They shows. don't want you in the military? Uh, and that was they Sam. They don't think and, you should have spousal rights? Right? Sam Nunn and Bill Clinton led the charge against gays in the military. I mean, well, that's true. Gays and, and, and gays and lesbians, really, we're not particularly welcome in either party right now. And we're fighting on both fronts. And in this country, you have to fight in both parties. Mm -hmm. The reality is the gay community mirrors the American public, and we should be out wherever we are. And if we're fiscally conservative, we be believe in less Which government, you are. individual rights. If you believe in a strong military because everything else becomes irrelevant. If individual your rights safe, is a hallmark of the Republican Party. Exactly. We were created on that, and uh -huh. we're the party of Lincoln. There are people in our party who are trying to take that away. And it's very important for Republicans, and only Republicans can really change this, to stand up to those folks yeah. who are doing that. The, pa the people who held the Colin Powell press conference told us more about them and they did about Colin The Powell. ones who condemned Powell. Absolutely. Absolutely. And they're, they're absolutely. And you're saying they're a splinter in the party and that yes. really count? I, and they're much, they're a, a, a chunk of the Republican Party. They will do the same damage to our party that Labor did to the Democratic Party. And they're overrated. In fact, that press conference was organized by David Keene, yeah. the head of the American Conservative Union, who is basically a total supporter of Bob Dole. And well, Bob Dole is behind well, that whole well, press conference. You know, I find it amazing well, to have well, you, well, and I'm sorry, well, let me just finish well, that sentence, well, but to have you defend Bob Dole's record on affirmative action. Well, just let him make a he, point. He just changed his mind on affirmative action. He huh? changed his mind three times on the check from the Law Cabin Republicans. Yes, this is a fascinating yeah. story. First of all, they requested a check from them. Then they returned the check. Yes. Then he goes on the David Brinkley show and defends returning the check. Yes. Then a month later, he tells the Washington Post that he was wrong to return the check and it was a mistake by his staff. Is this the kind of leader the Republican <laughs> Party is? That's Milton's leader. I mean, talk to him. I get it. You're first. When we come back with four proud Republicans as we are about to enter 
the presidential year of 1996. Holy cow. We'll be back in just a moment. Good hot chocolate chip cookies are? Oh, yeah. You know how good they smell? Oh, yeah. And how the chocolate gets all melty all over your fingers? Oh, yeah. Well, don't Pillsbury chocolate chip cookies bake up hot and fresh in less than 15 minutes? Oh, yeah. Wow, you were right. Oh, works every time. Woohoo! America, millions of you have skinny hair. Well, stop hiding it. From Conair, get the Big Curls Hot Air Curling Iron and Brush. Styled as it dries, brushes in volume. Nobody's bigger in hair than Conair. Want your toilet really clean? Pour in Clorox bleach after every flush. Or better yet, drop Clorox automatic toilet cleaner in your tank. It cleans with the power of Clorox bleach every time you flush. Clorox automatic. Right, a series of conversations beginning with Richard Toffel. What's exciting about, I think, gay people today is they're coming out wherever they are, whether that's the Roman Catholic Church or the Republican Party or in the Midwest. Um, that's where change will take place. Paul Thoreau. Naguib Mahfouz, Nobel Prize winner. Just before I met him, someone stabbed him in the neck. Sheikh Omar put a fatwa out on him. They said, stab this man, kill this man. So someone stabbed him. I had a choice when I went to uh, Egypt to go see the pyramids and the Sphinx, or go to the intensive care ward and see Naguib Mahfouz? Well, there's no question. I went to the intensive care ward. We had a nice, nice little chat about life, literature, and getting stabbed. Joe Franklin. You know, I remember when Khomeini took over. I was inside Iran during the revolutions. I remember the whole genesis of it. What they were saying was very simply, in some ways, we will not become westernized totally. We will move ahead in the world. We will work with you. We will set up systems of uh, cooperation, but we are not going to become you. Ivy Hayes. The thing that I learned there was a way of seeing how to define objects in space, how to uh, relate objects one to the other, and how to capture the essence of what it is that you're trying to uh, portray two-dimensionally on uh, paper using pencil. And Hal Crowther. It's the mix. I mean, one night it's Yeltsin, and the next night, it's the woman whose husband had the whore on, you know, in, in L.A. It's, a, it's as if, you know, it's all one now. And that's, that's it's sort of a contamination of the media, as if no one has any particular control over what's news and what's not news. A composite of conversations when we continue. <laughs> When Republican presidential frontrunner Senator Robert Dole returned the campaign contribution of a gay Republican group, he found himself in hot water. Under heavy criticism, Senator Dole late admitted his initial action was a mistake. The gay Republican group is called the Log Cabin Republicans, and they consider themselves mainstream Republicans in favor of smaller government and low taxes and a strong military. Yet their existence has raised the ire of both the religious right and left-wing gays. Joining me now in New York is the executive director of the Log Cabin Republicans, Rich Toffel, and I'm pleased to have him here. Welcome. Nice to uh, you. Up from Washington, D.C. Did this thing just explode for you when all of a sudden you had made a contribution uh, to the camp? Why did you contribute to Robert Dole? Well, first they asked us, and yeah. uh, we've been working. We've, been, we've somebody been, called. Yeah, we've been working with the campaign for quite a while, yeah. and uh, the senator came out with some very positive comments in the New York Times magazine, and then a few later, a uh, few weeks later, he was uh, flip flopping on that and saying something critical about gays and lesbians. Already at that time, this is back in the spring, the campaign had talked to us about raising some money for them, and at that point, I said, well, you know, we're not going to raise any money for you, and uh, you know, you'll have to get uh, Lou Sheldon in the far right to sell your tables. And so we were called into the campaign and met with the finance committee chairman and members of the campaign. I was introduced to everybody at the campaign. 
I shared our concerns. Uh, we didn't want to see what happened to us, what happened with George Bush mm -hmm. in 1992, a, a man who's probably comfortable with gay people, but kowtow to the far right in our party, and we were afraid that was going to happen again. Absolutely sure this wasn't going to be a problem. Uh, we talked about the tangible issue that we were working on at the time, which was the Ryan White Care Act. And we said, you know, basically the senator's got a good record on this, AIDS issues. He needs to be uh, scheduling that, co-sponsoring it, getting it to the floor. That would be a very tangible way. And he did. He showed a lot of leadership and worked with the uh, Senator Nancy Castlebaum in getting that mm -hmm. to a vote. So we were pretty pleased and we were working well. Uh, it was in the midst of all that that they asked us to come to a PAC fundraiser uh, where we brought the PAC check and I talked to the senator about Ryan White. Mm -hmm. And uh, that what happened was then three months later, a reporter discovered it in an FEC report and said, do you know you'll be the first Republican to accept money from a gay group? And that was right after Iowa and Senator Graham doing so well against Senator Dole. And the campaign panicked, I think, and said, we'll be beat up on this by the far right. We've got to show that we're far right. And that's when they said, we don't know who this group is. They're 100% disagreement with us on the issues. Yeah. And, and, and their agenda is not our agenda. Their agenda is not our agenda. Oh, and, all that and, sort of stuff. and by the way, we sent their money back. And we're sending it back immediately. We would not, and we're not going to accept yeah. it. And then for about two months after that, sort of moderate Republicans, people who were supporting Senator Dole, just kept confronting him. And so did the media. And every uh, editorial in the country kept saying it was wrong, it was wrong, it was wrong. And then two months later, he said, if I had been there, I would have not returned their check. About blaming my the staff. My campaign had staff did Bad it. staff work. Yeah. yeah. And so what do you think of all this? Well, it, our role in the party really is to educate on this topic. And, that, and our goal is to make this an issue where people have to deal with it. Uh, we, we're not uh, in your face, but at the same time, we're, we're not hiding who we are. And uh, I think it was a good lesson. Uh, I think if you asked people two months ago, uh, does going anti-gay in the Republican primary a plus or negative, they would have said, oh, that's easy. It's going to get the far right all excited and, and there's nobody else out there. And this taught a lesson that it doesn't work, not in the Republican primary. I, I want to talk about the far right in, in just a minute, but just mm -hmm. stay with me. Notion. What's the popul The gay population in America is what, 10 percent? What, what uh, it goes from 4 to 10 percent. Okay. Um, and so I would assume that the population on most presidential campaigns of gays is what, 10 percent of probably of most campaign staffs, wouldn't you, or more? On campaign staffs? Yeah. Uh, for whatever reason, political staffs on Capitol Hill and, and presidential camps, I think, have a disproportionate amount of gay staff. Including Senator Dole and Senator Graham. Including and, everybody, and, and yeah. all of them. Yeah, even Pat Buchanan admitted the other day that he had gay staff. On his staff? Yes. Yeah. And so how does he square that? Well, there's, a, there's ways of squaring. You say, I'm, they're supporting me, and I'm not supporting right, any the special agenda. And, yeah. yeah, that sort of thing. So you can, there's ways of rationalizing it. But it, there were more gays working in the Reagan White House than working in the Clinton administration. I mean, that was, was well known in Washington. They, they had a nickname for themselves, the laissez fairies is what they called themselves. So, I mean, people have been working uh, in political campaigns in the Republican Party for a long time. It's just the difference now is people are coming out of the closet and saying, you're going to have to deal with me openly and honestly. You believe, how much influence do you think, not just your organization, but the gays have on elections? As I understand it, that uh, the mayor of L.A. gave some credit to your group as yes. helping get him elected the mayor of Los Angeles? I think in some key races and key places, our groups played a key role. I used to work for Governor Weld, Massachusetts, and we played, I think, a key role. The gay community supported him in his first and second races, and the first one was very close. The mayor of Los Angeles, again, took a chunk of the gay vote, and even Mayor Giuliani, also here in New York, took a chunk of the gay vote. That's an important group, especially when most political consultants would write that off to the Democratic Party. And what about the power of the right? Do, do you think that they exaggerate their influence? I do. I, I absolutely do. I absolutely do. I think the far right exaggerates and the far left likes to say that they're very powerful, too, because it is the Achilles heel of the Republican Party is our intolerance, is our weak, weakest spot. And so when Ralph Reed comes out and says uh, how powerful we are, no one on the far left is going to challenge it. They're going to say, yes, he's very powerful, and that's why you need to support uh, our party. I think that's a lot of the fear of Colin Powell right now, frankly, is that people are, if he gets into the race and you look at the numbers, the Republican Party is not so far right after all. They're terrified that this big secret will be out because they've been successful at getting people like Bob Dole, a centrist Republican, to be something he's not, to move him to the far right. And they want to keep doing that so they have jobs and power in the next It is part of the conventional wisdom that you move to the right to get the Republican nomination and you move back to the center to win the general election. Yeah, but I think one thing that's showing up is the Republican Party is not quite as far right as the right wing would tell you that it is. And the other is the American public doesn't like that. They don't like people veering from one side to the other. Uh, it's, it, it turns people off. Yeah. 
Do you and does your group have an agenda, a political agenda? I mean, in a di in a, other than issues I mentioned, other than, than in terms of, of whatever your economic philosophy is and whatever your philosophy is with respect to budget cuts and welfare cuts and tax cuts and whatever your philosophy is about the defense budget and, and, and strategies, a whole range of items, do you have an agenda that concerns or uh, connects to your sexual preference? We do. Um, we believe that gays should be treated equally. And that has, that doesn't sound too controversial. We believe gays shouldn't be discriminated. It, it gets more controversial when you start talking about the issue that comes up. Um, gay marriage was something uh, people in our organization would support. That sounds radical in the face of it. Uh, those are asking for equality. On the legislative front, this year, uh, we made the Ryan White Care Act our legislative priority. Obviously, we're a community that's been very affected by AIDS. And there's been a huge chasm between the Republican Party and the AIDS community. And we almost, since we're ambassadors running back and forth, um, between the two sides, uh, trying to get this bill through this year, which w looks very good. Everything went through successfully, but it wasn't necessarily a given. When the Republican Party looks at the AIDS group, and if they brand that disease a Democrat issue, uh, it's dangerous. So we end up going back and forth on a, a number of different topics where we try to present, I think, a different uh, viewpoint. I think we agree with gay Democrats on, on most things in the gay world. Uh, oh, but our things having to do with the sort gay issues, we probably agree. Gay issues. Our, our process, our style of how we would accomplish it, would be very probably different. And also, what would be different is your philosophy on all the other issues in and, terms and of economic. And that's really where economic. our vision. Sure, for a long time, people have described gay people as they must be uh, part of the Rainbow Coalition. You have to subscribe to, to big government, more taxes. Gays, feminists, and minorities are sure, all, have we're the all the same ideas. Same. And we all, and and that is very limiting for anybody, um, but. It's a whole new critique. What's exciting about, I think, gay people today is they're coming out wherever they are, whether that's the Roman Catholic Church or the Republican Party or in the Midwest. Um, that's where change will take place. It doesn't take place when people stay, uh, feel like they all have to become Democrats, all have to move to New York or San Francisco, live in the same neighborhood, go to the same clubs and restaurants, dress the same way. That's not really where change will take place. Change will take place when gay people come out in Mississippi or in the Republican Party or in their when church. When will that happen? I think that's the exciting thing that's happening right now. I think that's why you see the rise of gay Republicans. You see church groups, uh, gay church groups, and um, coming up uh, more and more. I think um, people don't feel they have to flee to the to a coast anymore. In the Democratic Party, you've had um, uh, Congressman Studs and you've had uh, uh, Barney Frank. Both have come forward. In the Republican Party, I know there's at least one. Congressman uh, Steve Anderson. Steve Anderson, who uh, has acknowledged he was gay and, mm -hmm. and came out, I think, to the defense of your group mm -hmm. at the time of this, and I guess wrote a letter to Senator Dole or something. Yes, he did. What pressure are you under because you were in the Republican Party and because you, I mean, what do you feel in terms of, of people who you make angry? Well, I mean, it's not, you know you're being controversial just by being openly gay in the Republican Party. Um, but we get it from both sides because the far right in the party, we are anathema. To them, it's very easy to dismiss ACT UP or a radical group, but when it is gay Republicans who say we share your values, we're not mm -hmm. against the culture, but we're gay. We like and the contract it, with America exactly as much as you do, exactly. but we have these other it things that are also this, important. It focuses the, the discrimination rights more. issues. Exactly, it just makes the discrimination more focused because mm -hmm. they say at the end of the day you're still gay, and that's where our issue is, and it, and, and it focuses more. We also get heat, obviously, from the gay left who feel like. Our only strength will be if we were all in the Democratic Party. We need to be a strong voting bloc in the Democratic Party, and that will be our success, and that will be our salvation. And so every vote given to a Republican Party is wasted, uh, mm -hmm. wasting our strength. And so those are two competing views. Um, so change takes place when you're standing against both norms. President Clinton, uh, because of, of how he's handled the issue, will he receive an overwhelming percentage of the gay vote, you think, in 19? I so, when, in other words, when gay voters go into the polling, mm -hmm. you know, are issues of sexual preference paramount to them? Uh, it's if I guess what happened in 1992 is that the gay issue did become paramount for gay Republicans. The story isn't that gay Democrats voted for Bill Clinton; they always will. They'll always yeah. vote Democrat. But gay Republicans were angry at Houston, and Pat Buchanan in primetime voted for a Democrat. The cultural war. Yeah, that was. That's the story. Now, for gay Republicans and who, who heard Clinton's promises and don't agree with him. On, a lot of his issues, but the, the, the gay issue so eclipsed every other issue for them. Mm. I don't know that they'll believe him this time when he says he'll do things. I think his credibility is strained even among gay Democrats. So it, it remains to be seen if he could win over. I think it only depends on if the Republican Party puts up 
uh, a candidate too far to the right. And I believe that only the Republican Party can elect Bill Clinton, in a sense, by putting forth a far-right candidate. What happens uh, if Phil Graham or someone that to the right is nominated? Do you support Phil Graham or do you go and support No, we wouldn't support Phil. Phil. We would not support Phil Graham. We would not. Uh, our people will do it what they're comfortable with, but they, we would not as an organization, I'm sure, endorse Phil Graham because he has a record of using the gay issue as a wedge issue. He's already done that in this campaign. In, in, in senatorial campaigns. And, and he did it in this campaign, too. In Iowa, he uh, got into a school board race where he uh, attacked uh, uh, openly gay school board member who lost his race um, just because he wanted to pander. How many members of, uh, in your organization? There's 10,000. 10,000. Thank you for coming. My, My pleasure. pleasure. We'll be right back. Stay with us. Is the Republican Big Ten big enough to handle a log cabin? We're talking with gay Republican organizer Rich Taffel. Equal time is straight ahead. Direct from the CNBC studio in Washington, D.C., this is Equal Time with Mary Madeline and Dee Dee Myers. We're back. Actually, you're going to see us for the second night, what's going to appear to you the second night, but we've just seen each other for the first time this week. And it's so hard to go so long without seeing you. You know, my husband doesn't even say that to me. <laughs> well, we have a better romantic relationship. Exactly. <laughs> Sorry, I missed even... you too, babe. Yeah, it's nice to have you back. Welcome back. Thank you, Dee Dee, and welcome back to you too. Where were you, by the way? New York. Yeah? What were you doing <laughs> out there? I, I think we should, not, okay. nothing worth discussing in, in the context of this show. Okay. Supporting the arts. You know, Didi will never let me talk about her personal life, but by the time God, If I gave would... you an inch, you'd take a mile. I would be so badly abused, it would be unbelievable. How about, let's say, like, by the time our contracts are up, let's see if we can get anything out of your personal life. <laughs> That's a deal. All right, we're only going to do one viewer mail tonight because we have such a cool guest, which is not to suggest on the nights that we do do viewer mail that we don't have cool guests, but there's so much to chat about with our guest tonight. And this letter falls under the category of loopsters, ask and you shall receive. Dear Dudu and Didi, no, dear Mary and Didi, you can call me Dudu, I absolutely love your show and never miss an episode. Get a life, buddy. Just kidding. <laughs> I was thinking during last night's show that a good guest for your show would be a spokesperson from the Law Academy Republicans to discuss their viewpoint and the dull contribution controversy. I don't think the media has covered the Law Academy's opinions. As a Republican who is gay, I find this interesting. David Potter, Fort Lauderdale, Fort Lauderdale, Florida. Our guest tonight is indeed not just a spokesperson from the Law Academy Club. He is Rich Taffel, the executive director of the Fast Growing Fast Becoming a Household Word, Law Academy Republicans, named one of the nation's 30 most influential gay, gay leaders by Newsweek magazine, up there with Martina. Say that last. Navratilova. <laughs> you said it wrong. Navratilova. Oh, I said it wrong. Well, you know who Martina is. She needs no last name. She's kind of <laughs> like a Madonna thing. And David Geffen. Taffel is a political star, a rising political star, a fast rising political star, cool guy. It's a stretch from being a Harvard ordained, Harvard educator ordained minister to being the executive director of the Gay Republicans Log Cabin Club. Take us, take us through your life here. Uh, yes, I'm a graduate of Heart Divinity and I'm ordained in the American Baptist Church and now I'm doing gay politics. So it, it uh, at first seems very strange, but really, um, my religious background is really the undergirding for my politics. It's because of my religious background, you know, you believe in change and you want to see things different. And it's what really um, activated me to get involved with politics in the first place, because politics is where change takes place. And if you Did want you to always want to go to divinity school? Were you always interested in sort of the uh, pursuit of theological questions? Yeah, I was one of those kids that, you know, in junior high was saying, you know, how many days was Jesus on the earth after he came back, you know, and the minister sort of rolled his eyes and had to look it up. And, you know, so I was like, <laughs> asking those kind of questions. And, right memorize all the books of the Bible, you know, by eighth grade and all that kind of stuff. So I was always interested in religion, always wanted to go into religion. What did you study as an undergrad? Uh, philosophy. Philosophy. Now, what do you think the Bible, what is the Bible in your view, does it, does it speak to homosexuality? I mean, I, I'm sure that's something that you've looked into. Um, and, and so, I mean, there's a lot, obviously diff, a wide variety of opinion, but how do you think the Bible deals with the issue of homosexuality? Uh, the Bible, there's a couple passages in there that talk about certain cities that uh, the Apostle Paul is talking about. There's some stories in Leviticus, but um, which are not positive. 
Um, but the, there's a lot of stuff in there. Really, I think what people do is they start with the prejudice and they go to the Bible to, to back it up. And that's been used for Christians against Jews, and they said they killed Christ. It was used to not to give women the right to vote in this country. They point to a passage that women should be silent. Um, I'm Catholic. We, it's one of the reasons don't, Catholics don't can't have be priests. priests. Um, it was used in this country uh, on the slavery issue. Slaves obey your masters was used from the scripture. So scripture taken out of context uh, and focused on it intensely can certainly act like that's an agenda from God. Um, Jesus never talks about homosexuality, for example. He talks about divorce, and that's something that a lot of uh, fundamentalist Christians don't like to talk about because it's something they actually have to deal with. But I think we're coming to a great understanding about homosexuality. I think people for a long time thought this was sort of a choice. Someone turned 21, they wanted to be kind of cool, so they moved to New York and had this wild life. Pierce your ear and, and Yeah, they wanted to be, it was, yeah, and I chose the gay lifestyle, right. and that was my new, that was my new. You know, and I some think of our gay guests and some of my gay friends have, don't like this emerging uh, knowledge or scientific knowledge that gayness is a, is a gene thing, is a hypothalamus thing. They want it to be a choice thing. Is this a split in the gay community over whether or not it's genetic or nurture or nature? I guess at the end of the day it doesn't really matter how you get there. But I think most gay and lesbians, almost all the gay and lesbians that I know, feel that it was not a choice they made. I think they all would, they would all point to some point in their adolescence where they said, well, I'm different from the rest of the gang. And if you're a guy in junior high school and you, you know, you're not attracted to the girls, and the worst thing you can be called is a faggot on the soccer right. field, um, you know, it sinks in your head and you sort of, you start dating women. And if you're a woman and you're attracted to other women, you, you, you try to pretend like you're not. That's when generally When did you the case. know you were gay? Oh, I think back at the same time, adolescence, you know, I remember those things and, and desperately reading about it and going to the library and reading the book that nobody signed out that every gay kid picks out of the book, but no one signs out because no one wants to know. And right. It's been thumbed through many times. And you would read that it was a phase, you know, that, so everybody hoped and prayed it was a phase. And I think that's pretty common. So I think I was in that boat, hoping that this was something that would pass. Were you always conservative politically? I mean, your parents political? My parents are pretty much m uh, moderate Republicans, straight. I mean, they're almost a focus group for where America is. On I look at them, I look at polling, they're almost always right there. I come from Pennsylvania, a suburban Philadelphia, so it's a pretty moderate Republican area. And they've always been Republican. Uh, they're not ideologically you know, far right or anything like that, but fairly conservative background. So that you carried that thread. Um, now, this is off topic, but are you doing the out here? Am I oh, I am. Now? Okay. We have to take a break. They forgot to mention this to us. Well, this is cable, Rich, and we, you know, we just go along here. Mary and I will take a quick break, but we will be right back with Rich Tapple of the Log Cabin Republicans. Stay with us. Hi, we're back with Rich. <laughs> Hi! Hi! That was kind of Republican. That was kind it of was. hard. I'm Hi. trying to fit in here. <laughs> I'm going through a second adolescence. We're back with Rich Taffel of the Log Cabin Republicans. And um, I, I know you must get, get this uh, constantly, but both in within the Baptist Church and within the Republican Party, I mean, don't you sometimes feel like the skunk at the picnic? I mean, if you, do, you know, I'm... The question is, how can you be a Republican when there are so many within that party that sure. don't want sure, to yeah, be? Sure, yeah, I do get asked that question. There's a lot of stereotypes about gay people. And one of the stereotypes is that all gays are Democrats, they all live in certain neighborhoods, right. they all dress the same way, and they all vote the same way. And the gay community really is, it, it, is really just a mirror of the American society. I mean, you'll find very conservative gay people, you'll find very liberal. Um, gays have, for the last 20 years or so, worked in the Democratic Party. They've gotten a lot of money, a lot of lobbying, a lot of votes. I, um, I think there's something to show for it. I don't know if there's a lot to show for it, but there's something to show for it more than the Republican Party. Uh, right now, well, changes... More acceptance. More acceptance, sure. Um, but the rhetoric is always, um, we can't deliver on these promises because of the Republicans. So, you know, but compare us to them. That's not really a, a system for empowering because what it basically says to the gay community is, we'll take your vote for granted because you have nowhere to go. Right. And then Republicans say, well, because we can't get it. And I think it's important for gay conservatives to come out to say to politicians, we are a diverse community. You can get our vote, but you have to work for it. And here are the issues we're concerned about. And uh, that's what Lock Heaven's all about. All right, speaking of stereotypes, there's a lot of stereotypes about the Republican Party. They were all a bunch of homophobes, which you know is not so. I'm just not going to deny that there are there is a homophobic wing and, and, abs and, and actually a homophobic sector philosophically, which goes back to the Bible. 
the, those people who find that in the Bible, as you were saying earlier. But there is another philosophical strain that's not homophobic, but goes to group rights versus individual rights. Do you elaborate on this? Do you think that the, the, the anti-discrimination and hate crime statutes are not sufficient to protect homosexuals in our culture today? Because that's where the other Republicans kind of fall off. Yeah, I, there's the debate about both. I, I know what you're talking about. I think if those Republicans who felt that way, who disagree with some of the certain laws, were more outspoken in support of gays, individuals, mm -hmm. um, that's the difference. If you want to have credibility on the topic, I think you have to come out and say, we absolutely do welcome you in the party. We want to treat you. We want the laws to protect you. And I'll fight to make sure that happens. But that's not usually the case. Usually they come in and say, you're already protected. You don't need those laws. And so I think for a credibility factor, if they would be more outspoken. What's insufficient it. about the laws? Uh, well, the way that the laws have been written now, we do protect certain classes. That's just, and that's just the status quo. Groups have been chosen, and they're ha they're, they have been laid out. So right now, a gay person can be fired from a job, and you can say, I fired them because they're gay, period. And um, How many states have laws that protect gays and say housing and employment? Uh, varying ones, but about eight or nine. And there's, there's, there's a bill of, uh, that's being put forth now about employment in the federal government. Um, here again, I think we all have the same goal. We want to see that gays aren't discriminated against, I think, fundamentally. There are different ways to get there, but I think uh, we could disagree on how to get there. But if more people, I think, on the Republican side were more outspoken and said, I really want to make sure that happens. That's not been the case. So the Democrats have been able to, I think, take the high ground on the issue. And I think uh, if Republicans wanted to be more libertarian, they could be more outspoken and be more inclusive. Well, what? What the flip side of that is if gay people could be openly gay and have another agenda besides the quote-unquote gay agenda, right? Right. Well, most gays, most 90% of gays don't have, there's no gay agenda. Gays want to be treated equally. They, they don't like being uh, told, particularly Republicans, I think, uh, who have more remained quiet about it and live with the don't ask, don't tell policy. I'm not going to talk about it. You don't ask about it. Uh, I think gay Republicans have been sort of shocked uh, in a way by the, the way the far right has come up and said there's a moral decay in America. And which we can all agree on that. And the homosexuals are leading the charge. And it's homosexuals that are doing this to us. And they're destroying and they're after your kids and uh, that sort of stuff. And nobody says, no, you know, that's wrong. You know, well, some people do. They don't yeah. happen to be, they happen to be on our side of the uh, debate. It's true, almost. Not totally exclusive. But do, do, you, do you reach cross partisan lines and find common cause with, with uh, gay activists on issues that you agree on, like anti discrimination? Sure. We'll work with other uh, gay and lesbian groups. We do all the time. But, uh, and again, it's not so much our goals are different. Our goals are probably the pretty, pretty similar. It would be the style, it would be the strategy, how you get there would be probably very different. Mm -hmm. We're more for sitting down and talking to people and educating people and working on their campaigns as opposed to groups that are into more confrontation and screaming at people and throwing things at people. Like what, and, ACT UP? Uh, yeah, I mean, more of that style. I think we're, uh, we're more education, not confrontation would be more of things. It's part of the evolution, though, right? I mean, the women aren't really burning their bras anymore, but there was a period when that happened. And as the movement progresses, you'll probably find that that becomes less, I mean, I think a lot of people in the community will find that that becomes less necessary. I think you're right. I think, I mean, I think gays being out in the Republican Party is, in some sense, radical right now. Right. There's nothing radical about being a gay Democrat. Everybody's sort of packing right. the back and it's very right. comfortable. And, and you are and, taking for granted a little bit. I mean, people do expect Yeah, that. and I think gay Democrats feel that very much. They feel like whenever they demand anything, uh, the Democrats say to them, well, where are you going to go, vote Republican? Well, right. that's not Yeah, really, go ahead. Yeah, Join the party not, of So Jerry neither Paula. side moves ahead, yeah. The party of Jerry Falwell. Well, you had no, a debate him on Larry King. I mean, you know. We are no, no more the power party of Jerry <laughs> Falwell than you are the party of Jesse Jackson, okay? You got your He's Jesse in our Jackson, party, though, and we have. And he's, to in, live he's with it. in our party, but I think the. T all of this is so media focused, okay? The media focuses on just that wing of our party, and I don't disagree with everything well, about no, that. Well, no, but I disagree with this party. <laughs> they focus on. When part of the problem with the gay movement is that the media focuses on guys running around in dog collars and stuff at these mm -hmm. e events, Correct. which is mm -hmm. not in any way reflective of anywhere near a, a huge proportion of the, of the gays, liberal or conservative, right? I think, I think extremes too often define the debate in this country all the time. Uh, Republicans are represented by the far right, and the gay community is represented by the far left. Neither is true. Um, I, I worked for a Republican governor and worked on his first campaign in Massachusetts, Bill Weld, and I've worked on a lot of Republican campaigns. And um, on the Hill, we are very well received, which shocks people, but we're very well received Republicans. And, uh, um, you know, we, I have a strong stomach, but I wouldn't have such a strong stomach that I'd constantly be going up against the wall. Right. It is a fear of the far right that 
scares a lot of Republicans who are more moderate. Well, though. when you have all the presidential candidates lining up in tandem. They're not all in yet. We'll be right back with Rich Tavel of the Law. What, how do you say? Taffel. That's right. Rhymes with raffle. Or what's your Asian thing? Rice taffel. We'll be right back. <laughs> Log Cabin Conservatives, hang in there. One more segment. Rice taffel. Right. Accommodations for guests in Washington, D.C., provided by the Hyatt Regency Washington on Capitol Hill. Steps away from the nation's capital, the Supreme Court, and the Smithsonian, the Hyatt Regency Washington on Capitol Hill will meet all your travel needs. If you have comments, questions, or ideas, you can write to Equal Time, Post Office Box 18686, Washington, D.C., 20036-8686. Or zap us a fax at 202-467-0601. We found out something about <laughs> Didi's life, but it's we can't news. tell you. All right, we're not going to tell you. I'm not going to tease her. Your personal life is your personal life. Next time she's not here, I'll tell you. We're back with Rich Tapple of the Log Cabin Republicans, and we were having a really cool discussion until we were informed. We must ask you about the cliche question of the week. All right, let's talk about this. Stole in the check. Mm -hmm. The most, I agree with him, sort of overhyped thing, but there is a lot of, there's something in there. Something said in there. I don't know exactly what it was, but it certainly got overshadowed by the president's flip flop of last week. When Dola uh, returned the check, or said he was trying to return the check, I just want to point that out. Yeah, no, I, I, I paid pretty close attention to that, <laughs> as you can imagine. All right, that was kind of a bummer, huh? It was kind of a bummer. We've, we've had a pretty good relationship with Bob Dole. I think he's a pretty good guy. So we were really shocked when the campaign said, We don't know who they are. It was a glitch, you know, when they had solicited it. We've been working with the campaign. He, and, and, they, um, and not only had they taken a check from the log cabin Republicans, they've taken a check from you personally. Oh, yeah, knew months earlier. Yeah, months earlier in the fir first camp first event he did in February in Washington. Came to you and actually solicited yeah, I went to the event, contributions, yeah, for, right? For personal, sort of checking it out for the organization. We met with the campaign. So we were kind of surprised, but I think what it, what it sort of demonstrates is the fear right now in the party. People are so terrified of the far right, and they're terrified that someone's going to get to the right of them on an issue, and I think they sort of panicked, the, at least the staff did. 
Uh, the interesting thing is that for two months, um, m Republicans, I think that's what changed things. Republicans were telling Bob Dole, that was lousy, he shouldn't have done it. Right. Uh, they're a good group, they right. worked in my campaigns. And I think that was what was interesting for us to see. That there were, we did have a lot of Republicans and conservatives coming up and saying it was a dumb thing. But Bob Dole, it was dumb for him to wait, but he is not an anti-gay guy. You've worked with him on other legislation, on AIDS legislation, mm -hmm. and he it did That's take... what made it so tragic. Yeah, okay, I think... All right, I'll agree. It was just hypocrisy. It right. was just It was just the fear of being associated with the group after having worked with us so well. So you're... I'm trying to be what you're not. Right. And I think that's always wrong. Did somebody, anybody from the campaign call you and apologize? Never. Never called what? them. In fact, they only released a statement to the press the first time and never to this day have called. And in fact, um, uh, I still haven't got my own personal check back, which I requested back at the time. So, so you kind of unendorsed Bob Dole personally? Well, what we did, we, we weren't endorsing. In fact, we had given Pete Wilson some money at the time, and we gave Arlen Specter some money. And we were working with, but the senator's campaign was actually the one in raising money earliest, and we were working with him very closely. And he was terrific on the Ryan White Care Act, and I don't right. want to take that away. So all those things were positive. And it wasn't an endorsement, but it was a way of saying, we're interested in your campaign. You've been good with us. We want to be supportive of you. But there was nothing clandestine about it. They certainly right. knew who he were. I was at the event. I talked to him. I talked to staffers. Talked to the campaign. Talked to his office frequently. So that was the you know the shock of saying we don't know who this group is. Uh, they're in a hundred percent disagreement. Could have done a lot of damage to us because I think a lot of people would say, yeah, they're gay. They must really be, uh, you know, anti-Republican, anti-conservative, anti, you know, the Republican revolution. What what is the agenda of the log cabin Republican organization? It's basically to educate gay and lesbian issues on the Republican side. Uh, what, what, what we discovered in many races were gay Democrats weren't particularly interested in talking to Republicans and helping them in the race or helping them through an issue. Uh, they were happy in some cases to see them fall on their face on this issue, which it's easy to do. It's a new topic and a lot of people right. aren't ready for it. So what we do is we, we talk to campaigns, we talk to candidates, we lobby on issues. This year it was the Ryan Wade Care Act. And on that issue, we became sort of ambassadors running back and forth between AIDS activists who didn't like Republicans. Republicans didn't care much for the AIDS activists. We ran back and forth, and what the Republicans did in the 104th Congress on, on Ryan White is incredible. Increased right. it in a in time of budget cuts. So it's, it's pretty remarkable. Now, there are 43, am I remembering this right, 43 chapters in 35 states mm -hmm. and some 10,000-plus members. How do you join the Log Cabin Club? No, it's pretty simple. You, you join at the local level, and it's primarily a grassroots organization. So most is of there, our is it in the yellow pages. I mean, is there an 800 number? Yeah, you, uh, we have a number at the national office uh, here is? in Washington, uh, 202-347-5306, okay. and we can put you in touch with your local chapter, um, and that's generally how it works. You have to free ad. We give you a free advertising. We here I appreciate on, that very much. On you 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 get a, you'll have to now? get an 800 number after being yeah. on this. That's show. right. It's going to explode. 20,000 members. Yeah, I don't think we're ready for the low <laughs> yeah, call. Yeah, exactly. Um, but do you guys have a favorite in the, um, or do you personally have a favorite? I don't know if you want to speak with the organization in the Republican presidential sweepstakes. We're probably pretty reflective of a lot of Republicans right now. Uh, when I watch the numbers dropping, they're not going Democrat. They're just dropping mm -hmm. in the Republicans. So we're not really excited. I think we're sort of in that, that vacuum period where I think somebody's going to get into the race, at least one other or two other people. Mm -hmm. Um, to fill the vacuum for Republicans that aren't excited about the race right now. What about Colin Powell, who on one hand appears to be a very tolerant man, on the other hand was uh, adamantly opposed to gays in the military? Well, I've been watching him closely, and I read his biography, and I'm very impressed. And now, on the military issue, I've also wa heard him talk about that, and it's very different than the impression I had during, during the don't ask, don't tell policy. He said, gay and lesbians in the military have to sacrifice more than your average soldier. And that's a different way of saying something. Um, I think that the fact that he's black and in the Republican Party and um, just a black American, I think he's going to be sensitive to certain issues. So uh, I'm very interested in him. And just as an American, I'm interested in him because I think he could bring people together in this country. And this, right now, a lot of the candidates are playing on our differences and separating us. Yeah. You're one, if there were another issue besides what people associate as gay issues, what would it be for 1996? Uh, for me, um, it would probably be national defense. Uh, domestic partnership laws don't make a lot of sense if your borders aren't safe and if your country isn't respected around the world. So I believe that and that's an important issue for, for everybody, for all Americans. Yes. Um, an overlooked one in 92, by and, the way. And fiscal issues are important to a lot of our folks. I really do believe in balancing the budget, and I think our organization does believe in, you know, getting the government under control. Yeah. Well, we're out of time. Thanks for being mm. here, Rich. My it's, pleasure. It was, uh, we'll have Terrific. to have you back during the... Anytime. Once there's, uh, the campaign gets a little further along, we can talk about more. Monday night, join us as we talk to Haley Barber, another great Republican, chairman of the party. 
Uh, we'll talk about his role at the RNC, hot issues, hot races, all kinds of political stuff. Be sure to join us Monday. Rivera Good Live morning. is up next. Have a great weekend. We love you, Good night, gang. Bye. Thank you.